Hi guys, we are going to do poems and poetry. We are going on with our lesson. So let's consonants. Consonants is like, you know, when we get the alphabet, you get your vowel and consonants. So consonants is the same as your consonants. Okay, so it is a repetition of consonants sound in nearby words, especially at the end of the words, as in blank and think. Can you see the last two letters in each word is the same and it is constant. Okay, so we use it blank and think. It is the two sounds at the back or the sounds at the back that is the same. You can see it with strong and string. It's the ing sound. Okay, so that is also a way for the poems to see if you can identify the sounds at the back of the words. Then we get the rhyme. So a rhythm is a regular patterned repetition of sound in a poem. It's like when we sing a song, it is the rhythm. Okay. So rhythm and rhyme can have poetry or can give poetry a musical quality. If you take, for example, the lyrics of a song and you extract it, sometimes you will see at the end of each line, it is the sum of the words that rhyme. So even though it gives us a rhythm, it also gives us a rhyme. And then we also use figurative language. So we've done it in class, in our language, but now we are also going to use it in our poems. So poets and other writers often use figurative language and other poetic devices to make their writing more interesting and expressive. So what does that mean? If we write a story, sometimes we make the words sound funny or we make the story interesting. Um, we give them a story a up the, and then maybe a down so that you take the reader with us where we go to a happy place or maybe something happened to the character and we get sad. So we write all of these things down to make it interesting. So the different figurative language is alliteration, onomatopoeia, simile, metaphor, idiom okay so we are going to start with alliteration so this one is fun so alliteration is when almost all of the words in the line have the same beginning sound so the first letter of the word must be the same as the other words so let's see. Let's see if you can identify the alliteration sound. Down the slippery slide they slid, sitting slightly sideways, slipping swiftly, see them skid on holidays and Fridays by Michael Rosen. So 
Can you identify the alliteration sound? Yes, it is the S sound. Good. Now we go on to the anamatapia. And that is fun to say and easy to remember. It is the imitation of sound in word form. So when we hear the music, it is fun and easy. We remember it. So with this figurative language, it is the words that sound the same or is fun and easy to remember. The rusty spigot sputters utters a splutter, spatter and smattering of drops. Cashes wider, slash, platter, scatter, spurts, finally stop sputtering and splash. Gushes, rushes, splashes, clear water dashes. Okay, so it is all the S words like sputter, utters, scatter, spurts. So we know it is easy to remember because they follow on each other. Then we have a combination if they use more than one figurative language in one. So sometimes a poet will combine two or more literal devices. Can you tell what two devices are used in the verse? Ice cubes clinking, clattery clink crazily inside my drink gonna do it again see if you can find the two figurative languages that we use ice cubes clicking clatter cling crazily inside my drink yes alliteration and anamatapia is used good job then we also have a simile. A simile is a comparison using like or as to compare one or more things. So they must be the words like or as inside the verse or the stanza. A rhythmic is where numbers fly like pigeons in and out of our head. So inside of this line, we've got the word like. As soon as we see, they compare the numbers that fly with the pigeons. So it is like. And if we see like, we know it is a simile. Good. And it is written by Shaul Sandberg. Then we get a metaphor. It's a figure of speech to compare two things that are unrelated but which share some characteristic so it is almost like a simile but it's not quite my brother is the black sheep of the family do you think that sounds right no because a brother is a sibling so it's a person so it's a human being and I don't think a person or a human being can be a black sheep because that's an animal so it still compares two things because usually if you are a black sheep that means you are naughty so they compare the two things but there is no word used like, like or as. 
So it is a metaphor. As soon as you see the words like or as, it means it is simile. Okay. Now we go on to our idioms. And we've done this. I know you know it. We have already written a test on it. Idiom is a phrase whose words have a different meaning other than its original meaning. So let's see if you can figure it out. Don't worry. The math test on fractions is a piece of cake. Do you really think a math test is a piece of cake? Like if I give you a cake and tell you that is math, do you agree? No. So it means piece of cake. We've done it. It means it was easy. So they are telling us that the math test on fractions was easy. But rather to say it was easy, we say it was a piece of cake. Okay, bye guys.